cookout and fireworks at 6 o'clock in the back parking lot. You are invited. We will have cookout food, burgers, hot dogs, sides. Uh, you are invited to bring a dessert and fireworks. So we hope that you will join us on the 4th of July. Also, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your pew so that we know that you were with us today. Are there any other announcements that I missed? Great. Most importantly, whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. The Holy One calls our sons and daughters to prophecy. The Holy One calls our young people to see visions. The Holy One calls our elders to dream dreams. The, Holy, the Spirit of the Holy One is poured upon all flesh. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 545, The Church's One Foundation. <laughs>
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. promised his disciples that they would not be left alone. Jesus assured them that the Holy Spirit would remain with them, teaching them how to live and reminding them of all he has said. Weeks later, when the day of Pentecost arrived, you poured out your spirit, giving your disciples the power to speak in many languages and making tongues of flame dance above their heads. Today we ask that you pour out your spirit on us, giving us the wisdom and the courage to live in peace as Jesus' followers. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together from the faith we sing, number 2237, as a fire is meant for burning. <laughs> chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly 
from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of you who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabs, each in our own language we hear them speaking about God's great deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents of heaven in, in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A few years ago in the midst, right when COVID was starting and we were very much online worship. I got this great idea to let the kids record the different parts of worship for us to put in our worship video. And I forgot all of the hard words in that text. And when I tell you that the sixth grader who read that pronounced each of them flawlessly, I was so deeply impressed with her. So. <laughs> Today we celebrate Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit moved in miraculous ways and unified the nations, the day we are reminded of the ways in which the Holy Spirit continues to move in our own lives. We are unable to comprehend all of the ways in which the Holy Spirit moves. On Pentecost, as the disciples spoke, the Holy Spirit moved through them. And the people from all of the nations were able to understand what they were saying in their native tongue. The Holy Spirit spoke to all the nations through a common language, unifying them through the wondrous works of God. Language is a beautiful thing. It allows us to express emotion and tell jokes and typically allows for easier communication and interactions between people. I have always been amazed by my younger brother's ability to learn languages. He is currently getting a master's degree in Greek and Latin after finishing an undergrad in Greek and Latin after spending 
six years in middle and high school learning Greek and Latin. I should mention he decided on a whim to start teaching himself Greek in those early years. And somehow he was still cool in high school, but... So while he was in high school, he participated in Kurtamen, which is basically quiz bowl for Latin students. <laughs> and I went to one of his competitions one year and was amazed at their ability to understand each other as they joked around in this entirely dead language. They had spent so much time in deep study of this language that it came as second nature to them. For them, the ability to laugh and joke in Latin was a beautiful, unifying connection. However, language doesn't always work like that. <coughs> there are times when language does quite the opposite. There are times where the use of language divides us. Things get lost in translation, including parts of our own Bible. The use of social media and the internet have changed the ways in which we communicate. I can't even begin to count the number of arguments I've seen happen in the comments of a controversial Facebook post. And as I watched some of these arguments unfold, I noticed that on most of them, no one is listening to understand. They are simply waiting for their turn to respond. So typically, these arguments just go and go in circles and often disintegrate into name-calling. Winston Churchill once said, the United States and England are the only two countries separated by a common <coughs> language. If I started saying phrases like, I was gobsmacked or that's pants, people would start, probably start looking at me a little bit weirder than normal. Language changes and evolves differently in different parts of the world. We can even look back to Shakespeare and see how much English has changed since he was writing. The divisiveness that accompanies language is not just present in English alone. When there is more than one language being spoken in a public place, Sometimes you might get a little uncomfortable. When I was in seminary walking across Emory's campus, it provided me with an ample opportunity to hear different languages being spoken as well as different languages on every single sign they would post so that anyone who was reading that sign could understand what it said. At Pentecost, all the nations were in Jerusalem to celebrate. Pentecost is the Jewish feast that happens 50 days after Passover and commemorates the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. In Acts, the celebration of Pentecost meant that people who spoke entirely different languages came together. And to get the full story, on how the different languages came about, I suggest turning to Genesis 11 and reading the story of the Tower of Babel. Genesis 11 follows the flood narrative and precedes the call of Abram. In the story, all the people of the earth had gathered on a plain and had decided to settle there. They began constructing a large tower that would reach to the heavens. When God saw what they were doing, God could see that what their potential was for greatness and decided to confuse the language so that construction had to stop because no one could understand the other anymore. And then today we read Acts 2, where tongues were lit with fire and filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to. At the Tower of Babel, there was one nation and one 
language. And then it got a little walking. And then at Pentecost, following Jesus' ascension, there was once again one nation and one language. But God did not just revert to a language that one group of people already spoke. God spoke to the nations through an entirely new language. The language of the Holy Spirit. A language that is indeed still used with us today. Because language does go beyond just spoken words. When I was in college and working as a summer camp counselor, we would always have an hour of rest time after lunch. And during that time, everyone would be in their cabins, and I would always tell my campers, I don't care what you do, but you have to be quiet, and you have to be on your bunks. I'm going to turn the lights off and take a nap. If you wake me up, I will not be a happy counselor, which means you will not be happy campers. Very rarely was I woken up from my nap after lunch. But one week, instead of my normal middle and senior high girls, I had elementary girls. And they're a different breed. And they would shine their flashlights across my eyes <laughs> to see if I was awake. And when I would sense that, I would be laying down on my bunk and I would pop my eyes open real quick. And I would just put my finger to my lips and then point down. The looks on our faces the whole week were priceless. It was great. This form, though, of unspoken communication does go beyond putting the fear of God into small children who were disrupting my nap time. How many times have we been with someone who is experiencing great loss or deep hurt? How many times have we been at a loss for words in those situations? How many times have a pat on the back or holding a grieving friend in our arms somehow been enough? It always seems that where our human intentions and interactions fall short, the Holy Spirit is there to fill in the gaps. There is something truly beautiful that happens in those moments. And when we are able to be open to the ways in which the Holy Spirit moves, it is accompanied by a greater understanding than what we had before. When we listen to understand the hardships of our neighbors, we open ourselves up for deeper relationship. When we listen to the experiences of our black siblings in Christ, we begin to recognize the places where we have been complicit in systems of oppression. When we listen to understand the cultural and religious differences of the people around us, we are able to realize that meaningful experiences with our deity transcend our theological differences. When we listen to understand the good news that Christ died for us and that he will return again, we open ourselves up to be filled with an even greater joy that we can think to comprehend. We can choose to be separated by theological and cultural differences. We can choose to be separated by language. Or we can, be cho we can choose to be unified as one body, which experience sin and failure, love, hope, and salvation together. And that is what the Holy Spirit does at Pentecost. It transcends all differences and finds a common language 
that can be understood by all. May we open ourselves up to hear the movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward to this morning's offering. God, on this day of Pentecost, pour your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts which we now give back to you, gifts that we know we have received from your great abundance. May they be blessed to further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to remind you that you can find our prayer list on the back of the bulletin. Are there any other joys and concerns to lift up as a community this morning? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, you have poured your spirit upon us. We feel your presence with us. And we give you thanks for this community of believers united through the language of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, we lift up to you prayers for our world as we see the division and miscommunication and violence happening around us. Oh God, we know that even in the midst of all that is happening in the world, you are active and moving, working to bring your peace and justice to all the nations. Oh 
rather pray for our own nation. As we too see the divisiveness and the violence among us. As we feel the fear and anxiety of not knowing what comes next. Oh God, we pray that we might move to see you more clearly. That we might put aside political and theological and cultural differences so that we might see you more clearly. Oh God, we pray for your justice and your peace. We pray that we will see places of hope and forgiveness and gratitude and joy. Lord God, we pray for this community and for ourselves. For the grief and the burdens and the loneliness and sadness and loss that we feel. We know that those do not have the last say. That in those times we experience the power of your Holy Spirit through this community. Reminding us that we are not alone. Reminding us that no matter what we carry, we do not carry it by ourselves. Oh God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us. that we might see you more clearly. In Jesus' name we pray. As we come to our time of Holy Communion this morning, I want to remind you that this is not my table. This is not St. Bethlehem's table. This is not the United Methodist Church's table. This is Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are welcome. Regardless of race and gender and creed and language, regardless of anything we have done or anything we will do, Christ invites us to his table. When we get ready to serve, our ushers will direct you forward and you are invited to kneel at the altar and you will receive the bread and the cup. Any money left on the altar rail goes to our Helping Hands Fund, 
which goes to assist our neighbors in need. If you would like to be served in your seats, please let one of our ushers know, and we will be sure that you get served during communion. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Free us, we pray. Free us through joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hand. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Christ. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup. 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. On the day he raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of bread and sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, and showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many, Partake in the sharing of this loaf. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, I invite those assisting with communion to come.
the table is set and you are invited. forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have revealed yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together our closing hymn, hymn number 558. We are the church. Please stand as you are able.
Thank you. 